understand something that the bigger your dream is the harder it's going to be for you to get up the bigger your dream is the harder it is for them to see you the bigger your dream is the harder you're going to have to fight to keep friends around you let me tell you something people can't see your greatness because they don't want to but i'm here to bring out your greatness i'm here to tell you that the higher you go is the more people will hate you for being high the more you achieve is the more people will hate you for achieving but you cannot stop you cannot give up you cannot stop moving forward it is yours to move in and you have to plant better you have to dominate this is your life this is your world this is your grind grind let me tell you something the harder you work the harder it's going to be for you to get up the more you chase your dreams, the more you distance yourself from them. And they won't like that, but you will. He taught me how to speak. He said, I will next year be a millionaire. He said this last year in October. I did. He said it. I sure did. And with him saying it, I believe and look at him right now. And so now that's teaching me to speak what I want. Hey, do me, do me a favor. Go, go by her. You should stop watch. I'm going to split up my presentation. I'm going to do two parts. I'm going to do a presentation for you, and I'm going to do a Q&A. Because from gauging the room, y'all are hungry. <laughs> y'all are hungry, and I want to feed that hunger. So do me a favor. At 20 minutes, give me a... Okay, you, you know what I like to do. Okay, cool. I want to talk about today why highly performing people no longer perform highly. That's what I want to talk about. <clears throat> why highly performing people no longer perform highly. And what I have to do first, I guess I take a page out of the key, but I kind of slap you first and understand so you can understand why you're not performing well so we can have a full understanding of everything. Now, one of the first things you need to understand is what got you here won't get you there. OK, there's a certain dollar amount when you can play and you can get to that and you can play a little more and you can get to that and you can play a little more and you can get by on the wrong motives. But then when you cross that threshold, the wrong motives don't work anymore. A long time ago, I used to want to be better than my parents. You say I'm adopted. <clears throat> I didn't, I, and in fact, not only am I adopted, but I, raised, I grew, grew out of CPS custody at 18 years old. I spent six to 14 homeless. I wanted to be better than my parents. As I got to a certain dollar amount, trying to be better than anybody didn't serve me no more. It actually made me a very bad person and it made people with money not want to deal with me. So what got you here won't get you there. Here are all the reasons why you are not making money and all the reasons why you should be making money. If you follow the systems, I'm getting ready to give you. You need three things to be a millionaire. You should probably write this down. Only three things. I don't care what anybody else say. Three things to be a millionaire. I did not read this in the book. I know this from experience. Thing number one, you need a product. If you do not have a product, you cannot be a millionaire. That will never change. You cannot have yourself or yourself only and you need some sort of product something that you can make money while you sleep something that you can convert the attention of and get people to buy something from you all the motivation speakers of old in 70s 80s jim Rohn, les brown zig ziglar they let they let people walk home with them with a cassette tape a product they're famous today from a cassette tape number one you need a product number two you need to serve people only two ways to make money, ladies and gentlemen. You got to create it or you serve people to get it. If you create it, they call that counterfeit. They got felonies for that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you ever heard of that, but that counterfeiting is not something they like you to do. So you can't make it. You have to serve people. If you're not in the people serving business, whatever that may be, you would not make money. Lastly, what every American, every person suffers with, and actually you brought it up earlier, business systems if you do not have business systems you're going to fail fall right on your face you need a product business system to serve people if you are missing one of these three you cannot be a millionaire let's just disband this whole six figures let me make them six figures i want to get to six figures by the end of stop thinking six figures because the middle class is the poor class okay remember i said i got to slap you in the face a little bit the middle class is a trap. They have sold you a, a bankrupt check on the American dream. 
They literally told you, go to school and get into a lot of debt, and that'll make you a model citizen, and we'll take care of you. And when you get old enough to actually retire, you won't be able to enjoy what you get. That's trash. That is unacceptable. You've been bamboozled. <laughs> You've been run amok. Plymouth Rock did not land on you. All right, you get it. You get the point. Millionaires are new middle class. I can assure you that the middle net millionaires are new middle class. So let me just teach you how to get to, to $100,000 real quick. It's too easy. Just get you 200 people sell a $50 product to. That's it. That's all the business system. How many of you can come up with a $50 product? Easy. How many people you know you can reach 200 people? Problem solved. You can do that in a day. You don't have to be smart to make money, but you... You don't have to be smart to make money, but you can't be lazy. Okay? So this product, millionaire, product, serving people, business system, these are what you need. <clears throat> now, here's what you don't have. If you are of the, uh, if you're of the complexion of connection, <laughs> and it don't look like me, then you got about an 87% chance of just walking a straight line. And it's going to be all right. There's a problem with that. If you're chocolate and sexy like me, you have another problem. You don't have a community. And since you don't have a community, you don't have an economy. And when you don't have an economy, you don't have no money. And since you don't have no money in a capitalistic world, you broke. No community, no money. I once told someone that I've never lived in a black neighborhood in my entire life. I lived in a white neighborhood that was populated by black people because we did not own anything. <laughs> this is what it is. That's, that's just what it is. I have never done that in my entire life. Now, if you are of the complexion of connection, your problem on the flip side, our side is we don't have a community. Their side is they never learn how to actually make money because it's given to them loan to them so they never understand the principles in which I'm getting ready to teach you. No matter what side of the fence you look on, there is a pro and there is a con. But we all got 24 hours in a day. Okay? So let's break this down very, very simply. Most of you, you don't have a community. And that's why your business is failing. You, there's no podcast. There's no one watching your live videos. I'm not talking about volumes of numbers. I'm saying you don't even have a community of people. What is community? Common unity. People in unity in common with your dreams and beliefs. You need to have a community so you can tap into that community and cash out the economy. And without a community, you cannot have an economy. And for people like us, what happens is they drive all the way past us and go to everybody else to spend money with. And these are the people that you say don't buy with you. But I, I beg to differ. I can get anybody to buy from me because I give value. We're coming back to that here in a second. What you need to just fully understand, no community, no economy. And how does that apply to you and your business? Where's your podcast? Podcast is a new radio. Cell phone is a new TV. Why are you still complaining about these kids on a cell phone and you're not recognizing that you should be creating some sort of way to get attention on the cell phone? It's that simple. Why you, in my city, I, I host a really large festival. I won't say it because we're recording. I don't want people down there to know that it's actually me. <laughs> I also have my real estate companies based in Nevada because I don't want people to know I'm actually buying up the land. That's actually me. And $25 billion from April to October passed through my neighborhood. And all the people complain about traffic. They complain. They say, oh, my God, there's traffic. Hey, all these people with traffic. They don't even realize I done tapped into the traffic and getting me some money. There's two type of people, ladies and gentlemen, the people who complain about traffic or the people getting paid from it. It's the worst. It's the worst. You either going to complain about traffic or you're going to get paid from it. So let's talk about traffic. The reason why your businesses are failing, the reason why you're highly performing, you're self-started, you got everything together, it's going down, it's good, but you have no community. And you're trying to create one the wrong way. It makes no sense that you're trying to create traffic. That's insane. 
To create traffic is the equivalent of watching a pond with one fish in it, hoping that another fish manifests itself, get the other fish pregnant, wait about 13 generations for the fish to finally jump out the pond. That's too much work. And that's what you're doing. How about you go to where the fish are jumping out the water and go fish over there? So let's break it down for you how you can make money. The first thing you need is bait. The reason why some of your companies are not growing because you got no bait. You got the wrong bait out of there. If you use a publisher, you need to be throwing out there free webinars about how to publish a book. She does it. Bait. Finance guy. You need to be doing videos about finances. What bait are you using? I heard y'all ask the panelists questions about, well, where do I get started? You get started before you're ready. Move before you're ready. It is easier, far easier, to educate a doer than it is to activate a thinker. Far easier. It's far easier. I can easily turn the shoulders of someone running 100 miles per hour. But you know them thinking people, y'all know them, don't you? They got all them ideas, huh? And every time they, what they do is they get on Instagram and they post about what they about to do. <laughs> all the time. Let me tell you something about what that, this is highly performing people have a problem by getting their gratification up front. When you get your gratification, wherever you get your gratification, work stops. So when you post what you're about to do, you go, whew, got it. That dopamine kicks out. You get to a little high, you stop working. This is why successful people move in silence. You don't hear about what they did until you catch it on Sports Center. If you didn't get that analogy, Sports Center is when you're late at night, the game already happened, but you can see the highlights, just the highlights, not the failures. People ought to hear about only your highlights. And guess what your failures are? It is vitally important that you understand the first thing you need to do is do, you need to use bait. Stop trying to make money up front. Amateurs focus on money on the front end. Wealthy people focus on money on the back end. If you have, if you have a philosophy right now that you're trying to meet a customer and make money, you broke. I can guess your dollar amount. No matter, no matter what you say, I can guess your dollar amount. Because if you're trying to make money up front, the only thing you're going to get is a frustration and a headache up front. This is what you do. Break even up front. This whole time you've been trying to make money. Let me tell you why you break even. How many of you actually have an email list? It's the only thing you own. There's three types of traffic. Write this down. Traffic you control. Traffic you don't control and traffic you own. Traffic you control is when you buy an ad. It don't matter if it's a newspaper or Facebook ad or Google ads. This is traffic I pay for. Put these three lines, call me when you're ready to do some business with me. That's traffic you control. Traffic you don't control, you've heard of it as SEO. Search engine optimization is when you put some things out, some keywords, and hope that people randomly, or a Google search randomly puts you up to the top. And when they put you up to the top, then you hope that you can get that. Your job is to make sure that all your traffic becomes traffic that you own. The reason why you so focused on making money on the front end, because you don't own your traffic. Think about that. Tempest Smith says that most entrepreneurs are people who are employees that move from check to check, start a business and move from sale to sale. You're so desperate for the money on the front end because you don't have no list. If you break even, you can now market to these people every day. McDonald's does it to you all the time. McDonald's spends a dollar eighty one to get you to McDonald's. It's the moment you get there, a 17 year old kid with pimples say you want fries with that. And the moment you get fries, it's all profit for McDonald's. All profit. They, they got you with the burger. That's breaking even. Anything else you get after a burger is all profit. Why is your business not structured that way? See, high performing people, you learned something and you became superstitious. I was talking to these brothers last night over some mighty fine cigars, some mighty fine cigars. And I told them, winning never taught me anything. <clears throat> winning only taught me how to be arrogant, superstitious, and comfortable. That's it. That's it. It taught me to be arrogant, 
talking about, if I do the same thing, then I'm going to get the same results. Forgetting about the fact that if I won, somebody lost and they coming after me. Arrogant, superstitious, and comfortable. Losing has taught me everything in my life. Losing has taught me everything from every dollar amount to everything, to every influence, to every client. It all came through losing. Break even. Once you break even, then have you a continuity product or something that you bill monthly for. I'm, gi I'm giving you an MBA right now. Break even. The second step, the moment you get them, you put them in a monthly program. Don't matter. How much energy you want to spend? You want a million dollars? How many people you want to serve? Give me a number. 50. 50. That's 20,000 people she got to serve. I think I left off a zero. That might be right. 20,000 people. If not, it's 200,000 people. That's a lot of energy. It's a lot of energy. You get the point, though, right? It's a lot of energy. Nothing wrong with that. Netflix became a billion dollar, a multi billion dollar company of $8.99. Which leads me to another point. You can make money by collecting money or selling what you know. I do both. There's no difference in, there's no difference in collecting a million dollars than collecting a million post-its. No difference. Money's just energy. It's, it's a valueless piece of paper. There, if, if you pull out your phone and see the numbers on your calculator, you got a five, seven, one, all the 10 digits. Those numbers mean nothing. But when I put them in a banking system and say, oh, these numbers were born differently. That makes no sense. You, we've been lied to. There's no difference between the numbers in your calculator and the numbers in the bank. You collect money or you make money. You collect money or you sell what you know. That's it. Those are the only two ways. Collect money, sell what you know. If you, somebody likes to kill, you sell what you know. Then you put them in a monthly program and you collect money. <laughs> well, I don't have no monthly program. You got a voice, don't you? I sure do. Okay, you got a phone? Sure do. You better start a coaching call. Cost $20 a month. Break even. Start a continuity program. Now what that does is you set up what you call a funnel. And if you don't know me, boy, I show no funnels. Break even, set up this program. Now you divide that program by every money you want to make. And expect about 30% of the people that you break even with is going to join your monthly program. $5. That's what you say, right? 30 people. That's $150. Oh, that ain't nothing. Do that for 12 months in a row. Then do it for another 36 months and watch how I replace your mortgage. Don't despise small beginners. Once you get them in a the monthly program, now you're going to upsell them. You do know you're being upsell, don't you? Every single business in America is upselling you. Every one. Every, they, in fact, the smart ones are trapping your kids and then upselling you. You ain't never rolled by a McDonald's. How many of y'all in here actually like McDonald's? Look at it. I never get hands when I say that. Never. If your kids do. Mama, mama, mama. All right, boy, come on, go in there and be quiet. They trapped you with the kids. And you said, since I'm here, I might as well get me a sweet tea, because we all know them come from the Lord. We all know. <laughs> we all know this. We all know sweet tea comes directly from the Lord. It does. It really does. Those are the Lord's calories. <laughs> As long with, as also Chick-fil-A. We know this. We know these two things. These are scientific facts. Okay, these are scientific facts. But, but think about it for a moment. They didn't even market to you. They marketed to your kids. Some of y'all businesses can work like that. Why are you marketing to people that don't serve you? One of the greatest lessons I ever learned, and by greatest, I mean in dollar amount. Stop serving people who are not my customers. Do you know how much energy you save yourself not chasing people who would never buy from you? Stop chasing people who would never buy from you. It is, it, it is, it is irrelevant for your winning and it is detrimental for your self-esteem. If they're not going to buy from you ever, why are you marketing to them? That is equivalent to selling people boats in Colorado. That makes no sense. They need snow boots. They don't need boats. Skis, break even, monthly product, upsell them to something. 
Upsell could be $19. Then after you do that, I want you to have your high-end product. Did I say high-end? Somebody give me a price of high-end. Not you, Mark. All right, because he was actually give me a real price. Okay, not 500, that's not enough. High end. 10,000. Okay, 10,000, 20,000, these are acceptable numbers. It needs to be five figures. Let me tell you why. There is something called the law of averages. If you, said, if you do what I said correctly, 5% a month will buy your high end product. 5%. 5% of people will buy your high-end product. That's how I grow the ATS Business University. I don't need all of y'all. Just need 5% of y'all. Yeah. Yeah. We got over 100 people. They, aver on average, pay $10,000. i wait for you to do the math. Mm -hmm. I'm a 37-year-old kid from the hood. I shouldn't even be making money. Yeah. It's set up in my favor. Yeah. And it's not me, it's the system. I get 75 qualified leads a day on a minimum budget. My customer cost, my customer acquisition cost is two cents per new customer. That means if I spend three cents, you can't outspend me. How many of you have heard of me before I walked in here in some way, somehow? Okay, the rest of that is my fault. That's your next point. You should be going for omnipresence. This is the internet age. Why are, you still, why are you being a stickler about quality when we got the YouTube era? Put it out there, come back. Now let me teach you this here. Understanding money and the way that we're giving it to you, it creates a problem that we all face. That problem is you ain't getting money. <laughs> it's a simple problem, right? You're not getting money. Let me tell you the last reason I want to tell you why you are not receiving the income that you would like to receive. Two? Okay. You're not receiving the income that you would like to receive. Simply because you don't have a marketing budget. You done fooled around and went into save money mode. Now you can't make money. Uh, I wish I had somebody. <laughs> Old folks say, you throw a rock in the crowd or that holler got hit. You ain't got no marketing budget. You so focused on customer satisfaction, saving what you got, you done cut all your employees, now you done ruin customer satisfaction. <laughs> now you overworking yourself to the bones and you think you a business owner. No, you self-employed. No, 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 no. You're not a business owner. A business owner can walk away from their job for a whole year, come back, and it's better than what they left in. Self-employed, something happened to them, something happened to the business. And that's not proper. That is not a constructive business model. So in conclusion, I'm gonna open up for Q&A. I wanna tell you how the only four things you actually need to make money in business. You should write this down. Number one, you need to find out where your customers are congregating at. A congregation. What is a congregation? All of y'all thought church, good. I'm using this to my advantage. A congregation is a set of people who have nothing in common. Who then, who then come together and get in common on a set of ideas and beliefs. And they do my favorite part. They donate to these beliefs. See, they ain't catch it all the way. You caught it, though. Zakia caught it, too. You know they ain't catch it. I said my favorite part, you know, they donate. You ain't got to pressure them. They freely give to these set of ideas and beliefs. A congregation is people who have nothing in common, and they come in common on a set of ideas and beliefs, and then they donate to those set of ideas and beliefs. Where are your customers congregating? If you in PR, where are your customers Congregating because you're more than likely into a B2B type thing anyway, a B2B type model, because you want to find people who already have successful businesses. In Zakia case, she's looking for someone with five figures already, preferably six and seven. And where do these people congregate? Find it out. The moment you find out where they congregate, step two, follow their attention. Just follow it. A group of people by 
philosophical and psychological default will fall into groupthink. They will no longer think for themselves. They will think as the group and that group will have attention going somewhere. And the moment they have that attention going somewhere, step three, jump in front of it. I see you wanted this. I didn't already built the product for what you didn't even know you wanted, but here it is. Step one, get a congregation, find out where they are. Did I say create a congregation? I said find out where they currently are and then follow their attention and then jump in front of it. And my favorite part, convert that attention into income. Let me tell you a story. There was this young guy, college student, who was in the middle of class. And in the middle of class, you know, we got that 15 minute rule. You understand? Yeah. Professor don't show up. 15, yeah. We out of here. 15. We, we out of here. I paid too much money. I got something else to do. Got these noodles sitting on the cabinet that I need to get to. 14 minutes, young, young kid still stood up. And he starts teaching the class. The class is like, wow, this is amazing. This young guy is, looks like us. It was not until the final exam to where the school, this is a true story too. It was not until the final exam to where the school didn't realize that it was never the professor teacher. It was a student. And they ask him, how on earth did you teach this complex college level science class? His answer floored them. I just read the chapter a week ahead. <laughs> now think about that for a moment. Wow. If you want to make money, and I'm talking about cash, if you want to make money, all you got to do is be a week ahead of people. A week ahead of people to make you a millionaire. An hour ahead of people to make you six figures. Find your congregation. Find out where their attention is going. Jump in front of it and make this money. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can plant better. You can dominate. All right, let's open up. <laughs> let's open up the Q&A because I want all of you to walk out of here and watch my time. Give me, you know, the five down or whatever you're going to do. Q&A. Let's, I just have one rule for the Q&A. Make sure it is an actual question that's going to make you somebody hear money. Yes, sir. Antonio, where do you start? Format, structure. Yeah. In this order is what I suggest you start a community. Okay. In this order. YouTube. And I want to I want to bless you by telling you don't worry about your YouTube subscribers. Your, what? your YouTube subscribers. It's the hardest platform to grow. But why did I put it number one? Because the way to build trust since we've been Neanderthals has been face to face. And the only way to be face to face on the internet is video. And the more you have content out there is the more you can post that link and look like an expert and be a week ahead of people. Make sense? YouTube. Second one, Instagram. It's the hottest thing. It just is. It just is. Instagram. If, you, if you're not tapping into Instagram, it's your fault, actually, to be honest with you. It's, just ta it's actually your fault. I'll give you a free way how to use Instagram. Somebody give me a real business in this room. Doesn't matter. Give me a real business. Triple A sauce. Triple A sauce. I'm, you know what? And what city you live in? Watch this. You know what? You can make me unbutton my jacket. All right. Two things he can do. Hash, actually, the only thing I want you to do. Hashtag Orlando in the search bar. Write these words down. Hey, I notice you love my city. We love our city too. The next time you're in town, I would like to take a screenshot of this comment. I'd love to give you a 50% discount on my product. What did he just do? How warm is that market? How much did that cost them? Where? <laughs> got you. Got you. Hey, I see you love my city. I love my city too. The next time that you are in my city, screenshot me this message, and I would love to give you 50% discount. 
on my product. Got it? Hash, t actually, before I do that, what, by polling your own audience, what's the number one thing people love to use your sauce for? Number one thing. Number one thing they love to put your sauce on. Hashtag chicken. <laughs> Was that hard? It's not hard. I probably, if you do it right now, if you do it right, do you plan on being global? Hashtag chicken, hashtag food. Same message, both of those. Who in here owns a restaurant? Nobody owns a restaurant? Okay. Okay, COO of a restaurant chain. This is free money. You're going to go to your city again, whatever city it's in. You're going to put out the hashtag of the city. Same message I just said to him, but you're going to do it differently. See, the problem with restaurants, and I own one, the problem with restaurants is the first time someone comes, you have about a 34% chance of them coming back. The second time, it's like a 37% chance of them coming back. The third time, it's like a 42% chance of them coming back. That fourth time, they stay there for life. And restaurant owners, they market for the first visit. That's a waste of energy. Market for the fourth one. Yeah. I'm about to teach you how right now. It's free money. I'm about to teach you how right now. Same hashtag, same message, same everything. And you say, screenshot me this message. Yours is going to differ a little bit. Screenshot me this message when you're in my city. I would love, what's one of the things on your, what's the dessert on your menu? No, no. What's one of the flagship prices you got? I mean, the food items you got. I would love to give you a free chicken dinner. And I see that somebody went, I can't do that. I can't do that. Yes, the hell you can. Okay. Yes, you can. Because the chicken is going to cost you $2. I told you, stop trying to make money on the front end. You brought them in. Sell them a drink and get your money back. $2 drink. And now you're going to get the dessert, right? Then you're going to give them a card. Hey, the screenshot brought you in. This card, oh, you have to try the cheesecake. It is delightful. This cheesecake is amazing. I tell you what, show me this card. I'll give you the cheesecake free next time you come back. How many times they came now? Twice. Next time they come, say, oh, you know, I'm glad you're here. It's third time now, right? I'm glad you're here. You tried the cheesecake. You know what I want to do? I want to make sure that the next time you come, the person you bring, their whole meal is free. Okay? Boom. Now they got a whole meal free. They go, wow, it's a lot of love here. Four, take, four time they come, you got a whole lifetime customer. Cost you approximately $9.78. And, and you too arrogant. To spend nine dollars and seventy eight cents on a losing manner so you can get to what's called customer lifetime value. Custom CLV, customer lifetime value. Walmart does this better than anybody. Nobody does this better than Walmart. Walmart understands that they're going to pay about twenty five dollars to get you in. They don't care. because As soon as you walk in, you're going to see all the stuff they want to get rid of in the front. Come on, I wish I had somebody that went in for some milk. And left with toilet paper, batteries, the <laughs> couch, <laughs> credit card, the DVDs, TVs, all, all that stuff. That, man, and they put that stuff up front. Yeah, they put it up front. They are, they are literally upselling you. You walk into Walmart, you walk into a sales funnel. They upselling you the whole time. Because they understand this ain't going to be your first time here. Oh, Walmart can't wait for hurricanes to come. Where you going? Come on over here. I can't wait for it. Oh, 4th of July, huh? Come get your charcoal from over here. Walmart understands that they're not marketing to you to come into the store. They're marketing to you over the lifetime of the value of that company. How many of y'all up until this point have thought that way about your customers? You got to be thinking lifetime. Yes, sir. No. Okay, okay. You have. You have. Good. That's your restaurant tip. I would totally do that if I was you. Go ahead. Oh, oh, my bad. I'm good, 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 good. Facebook, no, excuse me. YouTube, YouTube Instagram, Instagram, Snapchat. Now, if your audience is not millennials, don't even worry about it. Okay, it's cool. You can, you can skip Snapchat. It's all good. Just, just, just go on over Snapchat. But if you have a young crowd, you got to be on Snapchat. Let me tell you how to use Snapchat, please, ladies and gentlemen. Stop being professional on Snapchat. 
that's not, they left Facebook because she was being professional. Mom, <laughs> this is the reason they left Facebook because their mama was on there. Right. Talking about, you need to type right. You know, I'm going so I can type wrong. Right. This is what they did. This is exactly what they did. This is exactly what they did. So they went over there where they could type wrong. Don't be professional. The job, the goal is to show people behind the scenes stuff. DJ Khaled. Follow DJ Khaled. He's got the best Snapchat of all time. Nobody's going to ever want to replace that unless you get some aliens that have been having Snapchat for 10 years by now. That's it, right? After Snapchat's Facebook, it's too big to ignore. It's got 40% of the world on Facebook. Of the world. Craig? I couldn't help myself. You get it? You got it? Okay, I couldn't help myself. My culture come out every now and then. You know, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Facebook, all right? Here's how I want you to use Facebook. It's called the three and three technique. You send three messages a day, inbox. Then you write three comments on someone else's post a day, comments. Then you go to three different people's walls and you just show them love. Three, three, and three. Now you say, ah, oh, that's, that's too much. It don't cost you no money. That's nine conversations. Can someone be a deer? And, you send three messages, three comments. And three wall posts. Like you say, happy birthday to somebody, and three wall posts. Someone be a deer for me and just use your calculator and do nine times 365. <laughs> nine times 365 is what? Give me one of you millennials. Y'all quick on it. You record, yeah, no, you record it like, man, I would have I would helped you, bro, but man, how much? 3,285. 3,285 new conversations. Something I left out, conversations create clients. Three conversations create clients. Oh, three comments, three inboxes, three wall posts. There's only one person in this room that I know does that consistently. Mark Davenport. He's constantly on someone else's post, making them say thank you. Because the more you give a reason, the more you give somebody a reason to say thank you, the more you don't have to promote yourself. They feel guilty and go, man, what is he doing over there? Oh, do that. That's free money. Yes, ma'am. Antonio, when you come in my inbox, are you selling me Oh, no, no. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, no. Conversations create clients, not your pitch. <laughs> people are programmed 100 percent of the people say no 100 percent of the time to when they get 85 percent or less of the information every time hey, if you, you yes sir <laughs> that's the only way to make money serve people i'm absolutely talking about build relationships if you don't have money i can tell you how many relationships you have as a matter of fact i can look at your community and tell that community how many people they serve if it's an affluent community, they serve a lot of people. Maybe it's a brain surgeon, do 2,000 surgeries a year. But each person has eight immediately people in their family. Now that's 2,000 times eight, that's 16,000. That has access to another 45 people, et cetera, et cetera. That's why their neighborhood look the way it does. So last night you showed me a post that had how many views? 48,000. 8, oh, so let me, you wanna know how to go viral? Oh, okay. I got a post on LinkedIn right now. It's at 48,000 views. It's so viral. I'm getting racist comments on it. Oh, uh, you know, the poorest place in the world is a viral post comments. I mean, real talk. I mean, if you, uh, baby, here, here for the first time, just go to the comments. They're going to ruin that whole experience for you. It's, it's that bad. Here's how you go viral. It's called Vren Score. If you don't know this, I'm, this, this is his value. I'm not even selling you now. I have no upsell after this. What's I'm not selling anything. Like? Vrin, V-R-I-N. If you don't know about it, I'm going to give it to you now. Vrin score. Vrin is an acronym. Each letter should go to 10. 1 to 10. 1 being bad, 10 being great. Value. Ask yourself, is this post valuable? Is my hate for Trump valuable? Zero. Is the way I feel about this person that made me mad valuable, this subliminal slug I'm about to throw out there? Zero. Is this cat 
meme valuable? One, because everybody loves cats. It's all good. All right. <laughs> Zero. You ask yourself, is this post valuable? Or is this post rare? Now that you got a rare post and a value, valuable post, you're on your way. But what is rare? Rare would be me riding a surfboard with Speedos on. That's fair. That's, that's probably not going to happen. I'm just going to tell you right now. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? It's just not going to happen. First off, Speedos are too invasive. You understand. It's just not happening. It's just not happening. It's just, it's just not happening. That'll be a very, I promise you, if I get on a surfboard with some Speedos right now, that will go viral. It just doesn't matter. I, just, I can assure you. So you got that. It needs to be rare on a scale of one to ten. How rare is this post that people have seen it? Then this I. It's a bit difficult word to pronounce. Inimitable. It means how hard is this post to copy? Can I do the same thing that they doing with this post? Can, how hard is it for the formula mastermind to be copied? Yeah, you can say it's about, about a nine ten. Good job. Clap. It's cool. Yeah. Okay, so I got a nine value, nine rarity, nine, it can't be copy, none substitutional is the end. I mean, can I replace it? Can I just say, you know what, as a kid got something like this on the other page. Huh? So kid just did a live with pa face, uh, Pam Grill. Who, I'm not Pam Grill, but you know what, though? That would have been hot, though. That would have been hot. I'm just saying, though, that would have been hot. <laughs> Especially if this was the 70s. Do you understand? Okay. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Tashina Arnold, Pam from Martin. You know, I, she just typecast in my head. I always see Pam forever. Okay. How hard is that to copy? How many of y'all know Tashina Arnold? Okay, boom, three. But that's a bad percentage in this room. How many of y'all can get her to in interview with you? That's a different question now. Then have good content, good value. You get it? That's, that's high on the radar. And I can't go nowhere else and go see it. She was only with Zakia that day, that month, that year, whatever. When you have a 10 on all these, you're almost guaranteed to go value. You're going to go viral. You shouldn't post nothing on your social media that's eight or less. Excuse me, seven or less. Nothing. How many of you ever heard it broken down like that before? So how valuable was this conversation? Right. How viral is this conversation that you're hearing right now? That's the only way to post. It's, it's the only way to do it. If you're doing anything else, it's uncivilized, like Charles Barkley in the 80s commercial. Y'all yeah, probably too young for that. You know that snake in that mantis? Yes. Like four million views. Cause there's, how many of y'all seen a mantis beat up a snake before? Eat a snake. That is very, that's all of them. Your posts need to be like that. Your videos need to be like that. When Rakesha mentioned live videos, why are your video? You know, you, let me show you how your videos go. Record. Hi. Did you see what I just did? I'll do it again. You missed it. Record. Hey, everybody. This is. Okay, let me tell you how let me tell you how Justin Bieber got famous. Justin Bieber got famous with a guy that refused to let Justin Bieber introduce himself. The whole point was you are getting access to something you're not supposed to see. So you never let Justin Bieber reveal himself who he was, never introduce this. So it became a term for you, socially current, to talk about Justin Bieber. Ask yourself, and I ain't trying to get into Brandon. I'm just talking about money. But just ask yourself, how cool is it to talk about you? If it's not, ain't nobody going to do it. They're not. They're not. They're, they're, was that too hard? Okay. <laughs> they're not. They're not going to talk about you. And you want people to share your status. But why would they share your status when they don't want to talk about you? Yes. Yep. Yes. I sure can. I sure can. Of content so that we can 
I sure can. Gary V does this better than anybody. Yes. Gary V does better than anybody. Document, don't create. See, Will Smith understands. In fact, I don't know if Gary V says it, but I'll tell you this right now. Will Smith understands that being an A-list celebrity ain't nothing no more. It's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's a couple of things that's going to happen that is going to blow your mind. It's going to change up the world. They're going to start figuring out YouTube celebrities get paid just as much as A-list celebrities. And when that happens, because they already do. That's why Will Smith has come into my territory. <laughs> he kills it. Nobody, he is a, Will Smith is a poor vlogger, hungry, trying to get known, and he happens to be Will Smith. He kills it. His Instagram, I go to his Instagram. I don't watch TV. I watch his Instagram. Yes. I can't help it. I can't. And then he's so smart about it. He'll lead you to his YouTube. Uh -huh. I want all of y'all to start taking the Tyler Perry approach. You should, you should take this in your content. Let me fill the answers in your content. Content creation is very important because without content creation, you're not an expert. You're not. People would say, oh, man, she big. He big. Oh, that's just one like on their page. They nobody. I'm not lying. The social media is so crazy. If a terrorist attack happened right now, outside of here, two blocks away, none of y'all would check CNN and figure out if that was the truth. You would go to your timeline. Right? You would go to, and the reason is because you know your friends on Facebook ain't lying to you. If you want super speed, you go to Twitter. If you want some real pettiness, you go to black Twitter. That's a whole thing. That's just, just, saying, just saying. You got you to you understand Twitter to get that one. You, you do. Document, don't create. Here's a Tyler Perry approach. This is what you see on all my content, which I hope I got this from I pull, actually, you know what? How much time I got left? 15? 10. 10. That's good. That's good. Okay. First off, I need y'all to start going to Facebook and setting people to see first. How many of y'all actually do that? You can go to Facebook, hit the follow button, and set, do you do that? You did it with her. He's like, yeah, I did it with my, did it with my fiance, you know what I'm saying? She's my wife now. Nah. But I did it with her, you know, I had to make sure whoever was watching her page. Nah, I'm just joking with you. <laughs> How many of you are on Facebook and setting people to see first? Facebook lets you do like 30 of them. Now, obviously, I ain't talking about Pookie in there. I'm saying people who are dominating your field, why, are you don't, why do you not have them on C first? If you just go to Facebook, hit follow, you get to change your settings from default to C first or unfollow. Now think about, think about this for a second because the people who are dominating your field, they don't post like you post. You post to be popular. They post to be paid. There is a difference. Why be popular and not be paid? Actually, it's quite unattractive to be popular <laughs> and not be paid. <laughs> I was, yeah, it's it is. It's very unattractive to be popular and not be paid. Go to C first and start drawing inspiration from people in many different fields. This is what I've done in my business. I take the Tyler Perry approach. Tyler Perry has nothing to do with my field. Nothing, nothing, nothing at all. But he's so good. You buy, how many of y'all buy a Tyler Perry play before? How it start off. You see Lionsgate, right. and that's the only thing else you're going to see right. that ain't Tyler Perry. The previews is all what? Tyler Perry. Right. Then they're going to start off with a song if it's a play. You know how it go. You know, you, you know how it go. Then you're going to get Tyler, B. Medea, or something like that. If he ain't there, he's going to come out to the end and introduce people, Mo Tyler. And then it's going to be, oh, my God, I drove 1,500 miles to see Tyler. You know the end credits? Mm -hmm. Okay, you got hit with Tyler, you got seen with Tyler, then at the end credits you're getting hit with Tyler. Mm -hmm. All the time, and then you go, man, I need to buy something Tyler. Yeah, you've been programmed. Yeah. You, you, you've, been, you've been programmed throughout a whole two hours to say, yeah, he put in your head by me. Now, let me show you how to do that in the business world. This is going to bless your socks off. You do a live video. Summarize it for one minute. Put it on Instagram. Take your live video, write a blog about it. Take that same live video, do a vlog about it. Take that same live video, strip the audio, put it on podcast. Take that same live video from Facebook, then put it on YouTube. 
You see that? Take that same live video, that same blog on your website, put it in the two most popular places for blogs right now, Medium and LinkedIn. Now, yes ma'am. That was just way too fast. That's way too fast, I know I do that all the time. They be getting me here, I, I do that, I'm so sorry. Okay, here I go. Take one content, we start with your live video. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna record a one minute video about that live video, you're gonna put it on Instagram. Now you push it further now. Now you're gonna take 10 minutes of that live video, upload it natively to LinkedIn. Then you're gonna take that same video, and you say, you know, I'm gonna write a blog about this. Then you're gonna take that blog, you're gonna put it on LinkedIn, medium, medium.com, and your website. After you do that, you're gonna turn your website, and you're gonna, you're gonna go back to your live video, you're gonna strip the audio, you're gonna start a podcast. Very simple. You're going to strip the audio, start a podcast. You're going to put that same video on YouTube. Now you got one piece of content with your name and preferably, like this kid would tell you, the same handle. Please, as much as possible as you can. And now you're more Googleable, which is a real term. It really is. <laughs> you can Google me, boo. You know, it's a real term, right? You're more Googleable. And now that you are, you got content everywhere. The number one problem I see with entrepreneurs, I see two things. So number two problems. I see that entrepreneurs have been jacked up by their parents and they're normally the black sheep. That's the truth. Sorry, you ain't gonna like it, but that's the truth. Anybody in this room is crazy. You black sheep of your family. You know it. We've been, th we've been, th <laughs> you know, it. we've been thinking weird since the beginning that you get that. Number two problem is you think you can't repost your material. I've never seen such sickness in my life. Y'all need to be like, what, what's a girl that's real popular? Uh, black comedian, girls trip. Oh, you better wear that dress over and over. Yeah, if you ain't seen that, you don't know what I'm talking about. You need to post your stuff because the only people who saw it is the people that the algorithm let see it at that time of day. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Post that stuff over and over and over. And like Mark said, if they ain't complaining, you ain't doing it enough. Last thing I say, poll your audience. Please, please, please poll your audience. Stop selling stuff to people that they don't want. Most of y'all have a product that don't nobody want. And they not telling you, they just tell you they ain't got time. And you can't make money because you haven't put the dude, it used to be called market research. Now we just jump out there. Just poll your audience. If you, if, how do you feel this week? What's the number one problem that you would love solved by the end of the year? And let them talk. And then when they comment, don't correct them, throw bait out there. Let them talk some more. And then you're gonna move into what I call psychographics, which is where we're in. All y'all are worried about demographics. I enjoy psychographics. Netflix does this better than anybody. Psychographics, Netflix and Harley Davidson does this better than anybody. Who can ride a Harley? A pig. A pig. <laughs> Me, a skinny white lady that's 90 pounds, uh, a doctor clean cut, the regular biker guy, a dentist in a midlife crisis, doesn't matter. Because if you own a Harley, you're part of a family. Because they psychologically are getting to people. Netflix. Everybody watches Netflix. People who don't watch TV like us watch Netflix. We barely watch it, but when we do, it's Netflix. And you want to you focus on the psychographics of your audience. There's more people in psychographics than there is in demographics. Because if I ask you your demographic, you're going to say, millennials, all right, what, the heck, what does that mean? <laughs> okay, like I'm confused now. I almost went too far. What does that mean? What does that mean? That don't mean anything. It don't mean anything. My favorite customer is two people. I'll describe them to you. Client, I should say. I like Susie. That has a five-figure business. She is a coach, and she prefers personal development over money. Susie is not black. She's white. She's between 35 and 64. 64% of my network is Susie. 
You, you know I'm a black man, right? Okay, so it makes sense. I also like Carl. He's a good looking brother. He's coached somebody once before and he's got, got the, caught the bug. Now he wants to help people. He also has a five figure business. He wants to change the world. Likes person development over income. Those are my two people. The only two people I chase. And I throw bait out for those people. If you want to make money, please understand there is an algorithm for money. Algorithm is just a set of instructions. When you were four, you did not know how to brush your teeth. Now, hopefully, you do that well. Money's the same way. How can you make money if you don't know anything about it? Thank you for the time. I appreciate you. Hey. Hey, hey, you. Yeah, you. Hello? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Okay, look. It's time for us to have a conversation. You need a change. And I know the exact change for you. Plant Better University. It's the best route for you to go to get your daily motivation, daily education, and your daily information on how to build a better you. So come out. Sign up. Let's get started. Again, it's time for a better you. Don't you agree?